Hey guys, what's up? Ragnar, uma cena aqui da English Experience. Eu sei que talvez você tenha se assustado com a duração desse vídeo aqui, não é mesmo? Mas pode ficar tranquilo porque não é para você assistir esse vídeo todo de uma vez. Aqui nesse vídeo contém tudo o que você precisa para estudar inglês pelos próximos seis meses, fazer uma verdadeira imersão na língua inglesa. Então segura a ansiedade aí, nada de ficar pulando esse vídeo querendo chegar lá na frente. Se você quer realmente aprender inglês, assista com atenção este vídeo porque muito provavelmente ele é a sua melhor oportunidade para aprender inglês totalmente gratuito, sem pagar um tostão. Ah, gente, aqui eu não vou ficar falando de dicas e macetes, não. Eu vou te dar material para estudo, aulas, PDF, MP3, enfim. Tá tudo aqui nesse vídeo para te ajudar a ficar fluente. Ah, e como eu falei, o melhor de tudo, 0800. Vocês não vão pagar nada por isso. Então segura essa ansiedade, assista com atenção e anote tudo que eu vou falar aqui. E aí talvez você me pergunte, mas Ronério, dá para ficar fluente em apenas seis meses mesmo? Olha, eu vou ser bem sincero. Aplicando tudo que eu vou ensinar aqui, estudando do jeitinho que eu ensino, quando você terminar esse seu desafio de imersão em inglês nesses seis meses, você será capaz de ter uma conversa básica em inglês, se virar no dia a dia, conseguir se comunicar e também entender o que falam com você. Gente, obviamente não vai ser uma conversa de nível hard. Você não vai conseguir ainda falar sobre economia, política, ciência, religião, etc. A ideia é você conseguir se comunicar em situações do cotidiano, do dia a dia. E a gente sabe que a grande maioria dos alunos deseja apenas isso, uma conversa do dia a dia em inglês. Lógico, se você quiser, depois desses seis meses, você poderá continuar os seus estudos para aperfeiçoar o inglês. E, gente, isso é algo que até hoje eu faço. Até hoje eu aprendo inglês, descubro palavras novas, expressões. Então, isso é algo que sempre vai fazer parte da vida de quem fala inglês. Eu decidi gravar esse vídeo porque muita gente não sabe estudar, não sabe como aprender inglês e fica totalmente perdido em como estudar, qual conteúdo selecionar para os estudos. E aí acaba se desmotivando, ou pior, estudando conteúdos importantes, mas na hora errada. E olha, no decorrer de quase 10 anos como professor de inglês, e após fazer uma MBA em neuroaprendizagem e me especializar em aprendizagem acelerada, eu vi que esse é o maior problema na aprendizagem de inglês. Por isso, tanta gente fala que não consegue aprender inglês. Isso acontece porque falta método de estudo, técnica de memorização e planejamento de conteúdo de estudo. Então, pode ficar tranquilo, porque aqui nesse vídeo você vai encontrar tudo isso de forma simples, organizada, mastigadinha, gente. Ou seja, o senhor e a senhorita só vai precisar sentar na cadeira e estudar os conteúdos que eu vou compartilhar com você aqui. Ah, e sabe o melhor de tudo? Eu ainda vou compartilhar com você técnicas e ferramentas de hipnose, PNL e coaching, que são áreas de desenvolvimento humano em que eu me especializei para ajudar os meus alunos a destravar o seu inglês e que ao serem associadas ao aprendizado de inglês, te ajudam a aprender mais e principalmente a desbloquear a sua mente com essas porcarias que às vezes os alunos ficam falando para si mesmo, como por exemplo é difícil, eu não tenho bom, eu sou burro, eu não tenho tempo para estudar Enfim, todas essas porcarias que talvez fiquem aí na sua mente vão ser eliminadas por completo se você seguir tudo que eu vou te ensinar. Mas para isso você precisa aplicar tudo, mas é tudo mesmo, gente. Sem mimimi, sem essa coisa de estudar uma semana, duas, depois vir cheio de desculpas falando que não consegue aprender. Obviamente, se você não estudar, não aplicar o que eu vou te ensinar aqui, você não vai aprender. E o que separa meninos de homens e meninas de mulheres é o fazer. Just do it. Guys, sem mimimi, sem desculpas. Aplica tudo que eu vou te ensinar e eu te garanto que em seis meses nem você vai acreditar no quanto terá aprendido. E aí você já pode colocar aqui nos comentários se você acredita nisso ou não e se você vai seguir tudo do jeitinho que eu estou falando. Até mesmo porque quando você se compromete publicamente, a sua mente fica mais focada em alcançar o seu objetivo. Daqui seis meses você poderá ver o comentário que deixou aqui embaixo. E se você chegou até este ponto deste vídeo é porque você realmente está interessado em aprender. E por isso, eu eu preciso te pedir para já se inscrever no canal, caso você não esteja inscrito, ativar o sininho, deixar aquele joinha marotinho aqui no vídeo, porque assim, todas as vezes que eu lançar um vídeo novo aqui no canal, você será notificado pelo YouTube. Assim você garante que você não vai perder nenhum conteúdo que certamente vai te ajudar a ficar fluente em inglês muito mais rapidamente. Ó, oh, e olha só, vou te contar um segredo. Eu ouvi dizer 
que quem se inscreve aqui no canal fica fluente mais rápido também, hein? Então não dá esse mole, não. Então, como você já deve ter percebido, você vai estudar com este vídeo pelos próximos seis meses. Aqui tem todo o material que você vai precisar para estudar e fazer uma verdadeira imersão no seu aprendizado. Eu não vou entrar em detalhes, pessoal, sobre as técnicas que existem no método de estudo, como, por exemplo, recuperação de memória, repetições passadas, storytelling, pomodoro, suggestion pira, ferramenta de neuroaprendizagem, senão o vídeo vai ficar muito longo. Mas aqui no canal tem uma playlist chamada Aprendizagem Acelerada, e lá eu ensino ensino com detalhes cada técnica e explico como elas funcionam. Então, se você quiser se aprofundar, se você tiver essa curiosidade nessa área, dá uma conferida lá depois. Mas saiba que você vai ter acesso a técnicas exclusivas de neuroaprendizagem e aprendizagem acelerada para você voar nos seus estudos de inglês. E o mais importante é você saber que pelos próximos seis meses você vai aprender mais de 2.500 palavras e mais de mil diferentes frases. E o melhor, tudo isso contextualizado, nada de ficar aprendendo palavras e frases soltas. O seu cérebro gosta de histórias, de contextos. Aprender palavras e frases soltas é ineficiente. Você só vai gastar tempo e não vai se lembrar do que aprendeu. Por isso que eu nunca recomendo o Anki, porque é tudo solto, né? Você precisa de um contexto, de uma história. Só para você ter uma ideia, em 1997, foi feita uma enorme pesquisa para encontrar as palavras mais comuns no inglês. E computadores foram utilizados para escanear cerca de 1.600 livros em inglês e encontrar essas palavras. O resultado foi o seguinte. As mil palavras mais comuns equivalem a 70% do inglês usado no dia a dia. E se nesse número você acrescentar os cognatos, que são aquelas palavras que são parecidas com o português, como por exemplo, information, communication, determination, possible. Esse número fica entre 90 e 95% do inglês falado no dia a dia. Então note que para você conseguir se comunicar em inglês, você só precisa de cerca de mil palavras. Essa é a quantidade média que uma criança de 3 anos sabe, e essa criança já pode ser considerada fluente. Olha só que coisa incrível, não é mesmo? E como eu disse anteriormente, aqui você vai ter acesso a mais de 2.500 palavras diferentes e mais de mil frases também diferentes. Ou seja, você finalmente encontrou o caminho para a sua fluência. A única coisa que você vai precisar fazer é estudar. Mas então vamos aos nossos estudos. Bem, pelos próximos seis meses, ou melhor, 24 semanas, você vai estudar com o material que eu estou deixando aqui neste vídeo. Se vocês observarem, aqui na descrição do vídeo tem a marcação do tempo referente a cada semana. Assim vai ficar mais fácil para você. Quando você clicar em cima do tempo a que se refere a semana, o vídeo já vai carregar automaticamente aquela faixa de tempo. Então, você não vai perder tempo procurando a semana que precisa estudar. A cada semana, você vai estudar com dois diferentes textos que estão aqui neste vídeo. Esse texto está no formato vídeo porque ele já contém as legendas, tanto em inglês, quanto em português. O método de estudo com estes textos é o seguinte. Todos os dias, durante sete dias, você vai usar os dois textos que estão aqui no vídeo. E você vai estudar da seguinte forma. Primeiro, você vai apenas ouvir o áudio. E você vai repetir o áudio duas vezes. Em seguida, você vai ouvir o áudio mais duas vezes. Mas agora, você vai acompanhar a legenda desse áudio em inglês. Depois disso, você vai ouvir o áudio mais duas vezes. Mas agora, foque em acompanhar a legenda em português. Você vai ouvir um total de seis vezes. Duas vezes, só ouvindo. Duas vezes, ouvindo e lendo a legenda em inglês. E por último, duas vezes ouvindo e lendo a legenda em português. Ao terminar essas etapas, você irá ouvir mais uma vez o áudio, mas agora você vai dar pausa a cada frase dita e vai repetir em voz alta. Mas você vai repetir como se estivesse brincando de imitar. Você vai imitar o jeito de falar do personagem, os trejeitos, sotaque, enfim. Não se preocupe em falar bonitinho, se preocupe em repetir os sons. Mesmo que não esteja perfeito, a parte de falar corretamente vai vir com a prática e com o treino. Depois disso, você vai ouvir mais uma vez o áudio e agora, a cada frase dita, você vai dar pausa e vai copiar cada frase dita como se fosse um ditado. Mas nesse ponto, eu preciso reforçar que você deve evitar olhar para a transcrição do áudio, para a legenda. Faça isso em último caso. Primeiro, force o seu cérebro a se lembrar como a palavra é escrita. Somente depois, você vai lá e confere a legenda. Feito isso, o seu estúdio diário estará encerrado e você só deve repetir esse áudio no dia seguinte. Lembrando que esse passo a passo que eu acabei de ensinar deve ser feito por sete dias consecutivos. Quando terminar os sete dias, 
uma nova semana vai se iniciar e aí você vai usar os novos textos a que se refere essa semana nova. Caso você tenha ficado com alguma dúvida em relação a esse método de estudo, coloca aqui nos comentários que eu mesmo vou responder cada uma dessas perguntas. Ah, e no sétimo dia de estudo, eu vou sugerir a você materiais extras de estudo, seja uma aula de gramática ou mesmo uma aula de análise textual em que você vai poder entender melhor as estruturas gramaticais presentes nesse texto e naturalmente te ajudar a assimilar mais os conteúdos. Também vou deixar disponível exercícios de neuroaprendizagem com foco em resgate de memória, que é uma técnica de aprendizagem acelerada para garantir que você estude, aprenda e leve a informação para a sua memória de longo prazo, que é onde realmente é importante a informação estar. Enfim, pessoal, material top das galáxias, totalmente gratuito, para vocês. E se você está curtindo o que eu estou deixando disponível, não dá mole, se inscreva no canal, porque vai vir muito mais conteúdo para te ajudar a ficar fluente e você não quer perder isso, não é mesmo? Já aproveita e compartilha o vídeo com os coleguinhas para eles também ficarem fluentes em inglês, né gente? Mas continuando, além de todo esse material de inglês disponível, também vou disponibilizar ferramentas e técnicas de hipnose, PNL e coaching para você aplicar e ajudar a desbloquear a sua mente. Afinal de contas, a gente não faz uma plantação sem antes tirar os matinhos, não é mesmo? Mas pode ficar tranquilo que neste vídeo, no decorrer das semanas, todas essas informações aparecerão na tela para que você aplique a técnica correta no momento certo. Ah, e na descrição desse vídeo tem uma série de links separados por semana. Quando você clicar nesse link, você será direcionado para o meu site e lá estará disponibilizados materiais extras para você baixar gratuitamente. Ou seja, é só seguir tudo que vai aparecer aqui no vídeo e o seu sucesso está garantido. Last but not least, toda semana, pelo menos uma vez na semana, você precisa ouvir o áudio de hipnose que está disponível no vídeo aqui no meu canal. Vai aparecer um card aqui em cima, ó, agora. Isso. E também tem um link na descrição deste vídeo que te leva para esse vídeo de hipnose também. Eu repito mais uma vez, gente, esse áudio você precisa escutar pelo menos uma vez durante a semana de estudo. Ele é fundamental nesse processo de aprendizagem e imersão pelo qual você passará pelos próximos seis meses. Caso tenha qualquer dúvida sobre o método de estudo ou sobre as técnicas que eu vou ensinar, não pense duas vezes e coloque aqui nos comentários que eu mesmo faço questão de te responder. Então agora começa efetivamente os seus estudos. Fique com o vídeo da primeira semana de estudo e siga o método que eu ensinei. Boa aula! I'm 19 years old and I'm a student. I go to Northeastern University. I have a brother and a sister. My brother's name is Matt. He's 16 and he's in high school. My sister's name is Rosie. She's 23 and she's married. I live with my parents and my brother in a house in Boston. My father, Peter, is a salesperson and my mother, Helen is a teacher. I'm not married, but I have a girlfriend. Her name's Lily. She's great. My family really likes her. Hello. I'm a Brazilian student. I'm in Boston, Massachusetts, in the United States. I'm here to learn English. The Wilsons are my American family. Peter, the husband, and Helen, the wife, have three children. Matt, 16, Nick, 19, and Rosie, 23. Rosie's married. They're very friendly, but they speak very fast. It's difficult to understand them. Today is my first English class at Boston University. It's a big school in a fun part of the city. It's near a lot of shops, cafes, and theaters. It's great. Claudia, 54, is American. She lives in California and she's a zoologist. She is the director of three research stations at Sonoma State University, where she teaches and researches. Claudia studies animals, such as snakes and mice, in their natural environment. She loves her job and especially likes working in the mountains on the coast of California. Claudia is married to Chris. Chris is an oceanographer, so he studies the oceans. In her free time, she goes cycling and walks her dog, Luna. She earns about $75,000 a year. 
Can I ask you some questions about your school? Yes, of course. How many students are in your school? There are 650 now. That's a lot. And how many teachers? Ten teachers. And what time do your classes start? Five o'clock every day. How much is the school? Oh, the school is free. Very good. And your teacher? What's your teacher's name? Babur Ali. He's only 16. 16? That's amazing. Is he a good teacher? He is very good. What does he teach? He teaches English, Bengali, history and math. That's a lot of subjects. Does he work hard? Oh, yes, very hard. He studies all day and he teaches us every evening. He's the best teacher in the world. Hi, I'm Claire Higgins. I'm 24 years old and I live in New York City. I'm always very busy, but I'm very happy. From Monday to Friday, I work in a bookstore, the Strand Bookstore in Manhattan. Then on Saturdays, I have another job. I'm a singer with a band. It's great because I love books and I love singing. On weekdays, I usually finish work at 6 o'clock, but sometimes I stay late until 9 or 10 o'clock at night. On Saturday evenings, I sing in nightclubs in all parts of the city. I don't go to bed until 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. On Sundays, I don't do much at all. I often eat in a little restaurant near my apartment. I never cook on Sundays. I'm too tired. Of course, work is important for us all. It gives us money to live. It gives structure to our everyday lives. But for a happy, balanced life, it's also important to play sometimes. It's important to find time to relax with friends and family. It's not good to think about work all the time. I know from my work as a doctor that it's sometimes difficult not to take your work problems home. But if you take your problems home, you never relax. And it's difficult for your family and bad for your health. Don't live to work. Work to live. Life is more than work. Here's an apartment on Franklin Street. Is it nice? Well, there's a big living room. Oh, that's good. And there are two bedrooms. Great. What about the kitchen? There's a new kitchen. Wow. How many bathrooms are there? Uh, there's just one bathroom. Is there a yard? No, there isn't a yard. That's okay. It sounds great. My new apartment is near the center of town, so I often walk to work. It's not very big, but it's very comfortable. There's just one bedroom, a living room, and a pretty big kitchen with a table in the center. This is good because I love cooking, and I can invite my friends to dinner. The living room has one big window. It faces south, so it's always very sunny. I have two comfortable old armchairs, but I don't have a sofa because the room is pretty small. There isn't a yard, but there's a small balcony outside my bedroom. I want to put a chair there so I can sit in the sun on summer afternoons. So what can I do? Speak a foreign language? Hmm. Well, yes, I can speak Spanish and a little Chinese. Cooking? No, I can't cook at all. My mom can. She's a great cook. Hmm, sports. Well, I think I'm pretty good at sports. My cousin Alfie says I'm not because I can't skateboard, but skateboarding's not a sport. I can swim, of course. Everyone can swim, can't they? I can swim very well. I like swimming and I like tennis. I can play tennis pretty well.
But skiing is my best sport. I love it, and I can ski really well, really fast. Hey, look at that painting. It's a Picasso. Oh yes, it's wonderful. Where was Picasso born? In Malaga. Ah, so he was Spanish. Yes, he was. Were his parents rich? Well, they weren't rich and they weren't poor. His father, Don Jose, was a painter and a professor of art. His mother, Doña Maria, was a homemaker. So was Picasso good at drawing when he was young? Oh yes, he was a child prodigy. He could draw before he could speak. His first word was lapis, which is Spanish for pencil. Wow, what a story! Grandpa, when you were a boy, did you have television? Of course, we had television, but it wasn't a color TV like now. It was black and white. And were there lots and lots of channels? How many TV channels were there? Only three, but that was enough. We loved it, and there weren't shows all day long. There was usually nothing on in the morning or the afternoon. Oh no! What time did TV shows start? At around five, when children's TV started. There were some great shows for us children. I can tell you, we had real stories in those days. Did your mom and dad give you an allowance? Yes, but I worked for it. I cleaned the kitchen and did the dishes. We didn't have dishwashers in those days. You aren't American, are you, Angela? Where are you from? No, I'm Argentinian. I was born in Cordoba. Is that where you grew up? Yes, I lived with my parents and two sisters in a house near the university. My father worked at the university. Oh, how interesting! What was his job? Was he a teacher? Yes, he was a professor of psychology. Really? And what did your mother do? She was a doctor. She worked in a hospital. So, where did you go to school? I went to a small private school. I was there for ten years. Then, when I was eighteen, I went to college. What did you study? I studied philosophy and education at the college in Buenos Aires. I was there for four years. In 1969, Neil Armstrong became the first person to walk on the moon. Three astronauts flew in Apollo 11. The rocket took three days to get to the moon. It circled the moon 30 times. It landed at 8:17 p.m. on July 20, 1969. 600 million people watched on TV. Neil Armstrong said, "That's one small step for man." One giant leap for mankind. The astronauts spent 22 hours on the moon. It was about two o'clock in the morning, and suddenly I woke up. I heard a noise. I got out of bed and went slowly downstairs. There was a light on in the living room. I listened carefully. I could hear two men speaking very quietly. Robbers, I thought. Immediately, I ran back upstairs and called the police. I was really frightened. Fortunately, the police arrived quickly. They opened the front door and went into the living room. Then they came upstairs to see me. It's all right now, sir, they explained. We turned the television off for you. Oh, good. We have some tomatoes. Sorry, Nick. I don't like them. Come on, Evan. Tomatoes are really good for you. I didn't like them much when I was a child, but I love them now. Hmm. I didn't like a lot of things when I was a kid. Oh, you were a picky eater. What didn't you like? I didn't like any green vegetables. Did you like any vegetables at all? Only potatoes. I loved French fries. What about fruit? Did you like fruit? I liked some fruit, but not all. I didn't like bananas. I liked fruit juice. I drank a lot of apple juice.
And now you drink a lot of coffee. Yeah, and tea. But I didn't like coffee or tea when I was a kid. Well, I like both New York and Paris. But they're very different cities in some ways, and very similar in other ways. Take public transportation, for example. The New York City subway is cheaper than the metro, but they're both easy to use. And the weather, well, New York has colder winters than Paris. Paris is rainier than New York, but New York has bigger storms. What about the buildings? Well, the architecture in Paris is definitely more beautiful, but the buildings in New York are more modern. And living in the two cities, well, life is faster in New York. A megacity is a city with more than 10 million inhabitants. The largest megacity is Tokyo. The next biggest is Delhi. Third is Mexico City. Fourth is New York with about 20 million. Fifth is Shanghai. And last, the smallest, is Mumbai, which has about 19.7 million. Sometime in 2008, for the first time in the history of the world, more people on Earth lived in cities than in rural areas. The first thing to say about Tokyo is that it is very safe. Women can walk everywhere, anytime, day or night. Little children walk to school. You can leave something on the table in a restaurant while you go out for a minute and nobody will take it. Tokyo is also very clean and it is very easy to travel around. All the trains and buses run on time. Personally, my favorite time of year is spring, when it's dry and the cherry blossoms are on the trees. Oh no, I don't know anybody. Who are they all? Don't worry, they're all very nice. I'll tell you who everybody is. Can you see that man over there? The man near the window? Yes, that's Paul. He's talking to Sophie. He's a banker, very rich and very funny. He works in New York City. Wow, so he's Paul. Okay, and that's Sophie next to him? Yes. She's laughing at Paul's jokes. She's really nice. She's a professor at New York University. She teaches business studies. Soichi, what exactly is your job? I'm an aeronautical engineer, and I'm a JAXA astronaut. What is JAXA? JAXA is the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. What did you study in college? Well, I studied engineering, of course, aeronautical engineering. Where did you study? Which college? I studied at the University of Tokyo, and I graduated in 1991. Which part of Japan are you from? I'm from Yokohama, Kanagawa, which is part of Tokyo. Are you married? Yes, I have three children. What do you like doing when you're on Earth? Well, I guess my hobbies are jogging and basketball, and I like skiing and camping with my kids. First, we're going to Egypt. Why? To see the pyramids? Well, yes, but also we want to take a cruise down the Nile River. Great! Where are you going after that? Well, then we're going to Tanzania to... Wow! You're going to climb Kilimanjaro! Yes, and then we're flying to India. Are you going to visit the Taj Mahal? Of course, but we're also going on a tiger safari. You're going to see tigers! Well, we hope so. Then we're going to Cambodia to visit the floating villages in Lake Tonle Sap and... Then to Australia to see Ayers Rock. We want to take photos of it at sunset. Here's Kristen with the weather for the United States and Mexico for the next 24 hours. Hello there. Here's the forecast for Mexico and the United States today. Right now, there's some wet and windy weather over the Midwest states, and this is going to move east over the New England states. 
Temperatures in Boston and New York are now about 68 degrees, but it's cooler in Chicago, 65 degrees, and even cooler in Minneapolis, 60 degrees. To the south, it's a little warmer. In St. Louis, 70 degrees, but to the west, cool and cloudy in Denver, where it's a welcome 59 degrees after all that extreme summer heat. Moving south, it's getting warmer, 75 degrees in Dallas. It's going to be cloudy and showery across much of the northwest, with heavy rain in Seattle and a temperature of 70 degrees. Hi, Lara. Are you and Mel ready for your trip? Yeah, almost. We leave next Monday for Hong Kong. Ah, Hong Kong. I've been to Hong Kong many times. Well, I've never been there. It's my first time in Asia. Really? What about your friend Mel? She's been to Tokyo and Taipei, but she hasn't been to Hong Kong. Ah, Tokyo and Taipei. I've been there too. I studied in Tokyo for a year before I went to work in Toronto. Have you ever been to Canada? No, I haven't. I haven't traveled much at all, so I'm really excited. Where's the list? I have it. Okay, let's check it. Um, we've bought new backpacks. We did that a while ago. They look pretty big. I hope we can carry them. Oh, don't worry. We're strong. I haven't finished packing mine yet. Have you? Not yet. Just one or two more things to go in. Oh. Have you gotten the Hong Kong dollars from the bank? Yup. I got 5,000 for you and 5,000 for me. All our savings. I hope it's enough. No worries. We can stay with my aunt in Tokyo. Have you emailed her yet? Yeah, she just emailed back. She's going to meet us at the airport when we fly into Tokyo from Hong Kong. I'm really excited about my trip to Hong Kong. I haven't traveled much outside Australia before. Just once, two years ago, I went on vacation to New Zealand with my family, but I've never been to Asia or the US. I often travel inside Australia. Last year, I flew to Perth to visit my cousin who lives there. It's a five hour flight from Sydney where I live. Australia is a big country. Also, I've been up to Cairns in the north three times I learned to scuba dive there on the Great Barrier Reef. Last Wednesday at 2.30 in the afternoon, I decided that I wanted to go to Glastonbury. I was lucky. I found a ticket online. I'm so glad I went. The music was really great. Sometimes it took a long time to get to the stages. The lines were long, but people were always friendly. In the busy real world, it's difficult to have good conversations with people. At Glastonbury, you can do this. It's a great festival, with a great crowd of people. What more could you want? Hi, I'm Anton. I come from Canada, but right now I'm living here in New York. I'm working as a bike messenger. I really like New York. It's the center of the universe, and it's very cosmopolitan. I have friends from all over the world. I earn about $150 a day in this job. That's good money. I'm saving money for my education. I was born in Toronto, but my parents are from Bulgaria. They moved to Canada 30 years ago. When they first arrived, they didn't speak any English. They always worry about me. Last month, I had a bad accident on my bike, but I'm fine now. Next September, I'm going back home to Toronto, and I'm going to study for a master's degree, and then I hope to get a good job. Hi, I'm Rowanna. I'm Australian. I come from Melbourne, but now I live in San Francisco, California, with my husband David. He's American. David and I run an art gallery. It's a gallery for Australian Aboriginal art. I just love Aboriginal art. I love all the colours and shapes. I'm preparing a new exhibition right now. 
I came to the US in 2006 as a student. My parents wanted me to study law, but I didn't like it. Ugh. I hated it, in fact. I left school after three months and got a job in an art gallery. That's where I met David. Then we had the idea of opening our own gallery just for Aboriginal art, because most American people don't know anything about it. That was in 2006, and we borrowed $25,000 from the bank to do it. We're lucky because the gallery's really successful and we paid the money back after just five years. I go back to Australia every year. I usually go when it's winter in the US because it's summer in Australia. But I'm not going next year because I'm going to have a baby in December. It's my first, so I'm very excited. Hi, Sir Khan. Nice to meet you. Can I ask you one or two questions? Yes, of course. First of all, where do you come from? I'm from Istanbul in Turkey. And why are you here in the U.S.? Well, I'm here mainly because I want to improve my English. How much English did you know before you came? Not a lot. I studied English in school, but I didn't learn much. Now I'm studying in a language school here. Which school? The A-plus School of English. That's a good name. Your English is very good now. Who's your teacher? Uh, thank you very much. My teacher's name is David. He's great. What did you do back in Turkey? Well, actually, I was a teacher, a history teacher. I taught children from the ages of 14 to 18. How many children were in your classes? Sometimes as many as 40. Wow, that's a lot. How often do you go back home? Usually I go every year, but this year my brother is coming here. I'm very excited. I'm going to show him around. Well, I hope your brother has a great visit. Kenny, I see you have more than 300 friends on Facebook. Amazing, isn't it? I don't know how it happened. I think it's because my job takes me all over the world, and I make friends wherever I go. I travel too, but I don't have so many friends. Come on, Judy. I'm your friend. That's one at least. <laughs> but what about close friends? How many of the 300 are close? I have no idea. No idea? More than 10, more than 20? Uh, probably no more than 10 really close friends. So who's your oldest friend? That's easy. Pete's my oldest friend, since we were both 16 and he went to my school. He lives in Canada now, but he was best man at my wedding and I was best man at his. How often do you see him? Not often. Maybe once or twice a year. I visited him last year when his son was born. Do you know, he named the baby Ken after me. Oh, that's nice. You and Pete are really good friends, aren't you? Yeah. A survey of over 10,000 couples asked them how they first met. The top three were... First, with 22% at work. Second, with 20% through friends. And third, with 15% at school or college. Next, with 12%, was meeting online. These days, more and more couples are meeting this way. Just 8% met at a club and 5% through family, which was very surprising. Only 4% met on a blind date, maybe not so surprising. Last of all, just 1% met while shopping, so don't go looking for love in the supermarket. That leaves just 13% who didn't meet in any of these places. I sent Sally a text a couple of days after the date. She played it cool and didn't reply for two days. We met up a week later went for a walk, and then to the movie. We're still seeing each other. 
She's helping me train for a marathon next month. She's going to come and watch me. Also, she came to the theater to watch my play, and she said she liked it. I'm going to meet her parents next weekend. I'm a little bit worried, but I enjoy being with her a lot. Lee Strong is not an ordinary grandmother. She's in her 80s and has an unusual job. She's a stand-up comic and works in comedy clubs in the U.S. She lives in Jacksonville, Florida. She has four children and ten grandchildren. They think what she's doing is very cool. She says, I like telling jokes and making audiences laugh. She says the best part of performing stand-up comedy is when audience members thank her for being an inspiration. They like that she reaches for her dreams even though she is old. She is currently touring around the U.S. and making audiences laugh. Grandma Lee has a great life. She says, I can't go anywhere without being recognized. It's awesome. Mosiah Bridges is an extraordinary young man. He has his own company, Moe's Bows, which he started when he was just nine. I love dressing up, he says. I look and feel so much better in nice clothes. He makes bow ties using sewing tips from his grandmother. Moe's bow ties are online and in stores throughout the U.S. The business is growing fast with $30,000 from online sales alone in 2013. And he has a charity that sends kids to summer camp. Mo is a busy boy, designing bow ties, going to school, and playing football. But he has his family to help him make his colorful bow ties. Do you like being famous? Don't be silly. I'm not really famous. I'm just an old lady who's having fun. But it is unusual for someone your age, if you don't mind me saying, to be telling jokes in comedy clubs for young people. Well, I just like making people laugh. And I don't want to be an old woman in a retirement home watching television all day long. Why do you do it? I do stand-up comedy because the energy is amazing. Because I love to see people enjoying themselves because it makes me happy. Does your family agree with you? My family thinks it's great. Some of my friends say that it's not right for a woman my age to be telling jokes and staying out all night. And what do you say to them? I say to them, it's none of your business. It doesn't matter how old you are. If you want to do something, you can. Do you like being a businessman? Oh, yes. I love it. I like the planning, the marketing, and the selling. I like meeting people and talking about my business and everything about it. It seems to me you love what you're doing. It's true. I do. Do you have any free time? Um, yeah, but not a lot. What do you do in your free time? Well, I still go to school, so I do homework, and I love playing football. Do you have a girlfriend? Hmm, um, that's none of your business. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, who do you live with? I live with my mom and dad, and my aunts and uncles and grandparents live nearby. I live in the apartment above that young man. I think his name is Nathan, because I see the mail carrier delivering his mail. He never says hello. He doesn't have a job. Well, he doesn't go to work in the morning, that's for sure. He doesn't get up until the afternoon, and he wears jeans and a t-shirt all the time. He always looks messy. He certainly never wears a suit. Who knows where he gets his money from? It's funny. 
I never hear him in the evening. I have no idea what he does in the evening. I have this new apartment. It's so nice. I really love it. I'm having such a good time. The only thing is that it's below an old lady, and that's a little bit difficult. Her name's Mrs. Boyle. I always say hello when I see her. How are you, Mrs. Boyle? Nice day, Mrs. Boyle, and all that. But she never answers back. She just looks at me. I think she's deaf. She probably thinks I'm unemployed because I don't go out to work in the morning and I don't wear a suit. I think I wear really cool clothes. Well, I'm a musician. I play the saxophone, and right now I'm playing in a jazz club. I don't start until eight o'clock at night, and I finish at two o'clock in the morning. So I sleep from three to eleven. I went on vacation last month. Oh, really? Did you go away? Yes, I went to Italy. How nice! Italy's beautiful, isn't it? I think it's fabulous. I love all the history. Yes, and the buildings and all the art. Where did you go? Well, I went to Florence, and I spent a few days visiting the museums. Oh, fantastic! Did you see the statue of David? It's amazing. And then I went to see some friends near Siena. Wow! Lucky you. Was the weather nice? Well, actually. Amazing journey ends after six thousand miles. Ed Stafford became the first man in history to walk the length of the Amazon River from the source to the ocean. He walked for eight hundred sixty days. The journey began in April two thousand eight when Ed left the town of Camana on the Pacific coast of Peru. It ended in August two thousand ten when he arrived in Maruta on the Atlantic coast of Brazil. He went through three countries: Peru, Colombia, and Brazil. The journey took nearly two and a half years. I did it for the adventure, says Ed. July twelfth, the day I nearly died. Today I was walking next to the river. When I nearly stood on a snake, I stopped immediately. The snake's fangs were going in and out. I was terrified. I didn't move. One bite and you're dead in three hours. September tenth, knives and guns. Early this morning we were crossing the river by boat when we saw five canoes. The tribesmen were carrying knives and guns. They were angry because we didn't have permission to be on their land. We left as fast as we could. November twenty-fourth, the jungle at night. I was lying in my hammock last night trying to sleep, but it was impossible because the noise of the jungle was so loud. Monkeys were screaming in the trees, and millions of mosquitoes were buzzing around my head. I took a sleeping pill and finally fell asleep at three a.m. A gas leak was the cause of an explosion in Manhattan yesterday morning, killing eight people who were living in a nearby apartment building and injuring many more. Most of those injured were people who were walking to work or going to school in the early morning hours. Officials say the gas company is investigating the explosion. Last night, thieves in New York broke into the Museum of Modern Art and escaped with three paintings by Picasso, valued at eighty million dollars. Cameras were recording the rooms at the time, but the guard who was watching the screen saw nothing. Museum officials didn't discover the theft until the next morning. Last Sunday evening. A burglar broke into a large, expensive house in the center of Paris. First, he went into the living room, and he quickly and quietly filled his bag with all the silverware and a priceless Chinese vase. Next, he went to the kitchen and found some delicious cheese and two bottles of the best sparkling water. He was feeling extremely hungry, so he ate all the cheese and drank all the sparkling water. Suddenly, he felt very tired. 
He went upstairs to the bedroom and laid down on a big, comfortable bed and immediately fell fast asleep. He slept very well. Unfortunately, when he woke up the next morning, three police officers were standing around his bed. Tell us some more about the diet. Well, I think we have a good diet. We enjoy the food we can eat. For breakfast, we have cereal, homemade cereal. We make it ourselves. We have it with fruit. We eat all fruit. But we don't eat any dairy products. No milk, cheese, and we don't eat bread. So we don't need butter. We use olive oil instead. We often have it on salad for lunch with tomatoes and lots of nuts, and sometimes green peppers stuffed with rice. So you eat rice. What about pasta and potatoes? No, not at all. We don't eat anything made from potatoes. No potato chips and french fries, right? And I'm guessing you eat nothing made with sugar. You're right. We make fresh juice to drink, but with no sugar. And no soda, of course. What about water? Well, we don't drink any tap water. My grandfather lived until he was 92 years old. He was a farmer with a cattle farm in a small town near a river in the southeastern part of New York State. He had two sons. The family lived in an old farmhouse. The oldest son, my uncle, owns the farm now. In those days, people often bought beef directly from local farmers. My grandfather raised some of the best beef in the area. People came to his farm by car and truck to buy it. Everybody loved my grandfather because he was such an honest and friendly man. He never went out to have dinner at restaurants, but every now and then he invited his family and friends to the farm for a picnic. He served hamburgers made from his beef. He didn't retire until he was 80. He said the secret to a long life was a happy marriage and a glass of warm milk before going to bed. I'm 16 and I'm fed up with school and exams. I'd like to quit now and get a job, any job. I hope to earn some money, but my parents say that I can't quit school. They think I'll regret it later, but I don't think I will. I'm a student in my last year of college. I have almost $50,000 of student loan debt. I'm going to study hard for my final exams because I want to get a well-paid job. I hate owing so much money. I'm going for an interview next Friday. Wish me luck. I work in IT. There's nothing I don't know about computers, but I need a change. I'm thinking of applying for another job with a company in New York. I saw it advertised online, and it looks like the job for me. I'd love to work there for a couple of years. Hello, everyone. My name's Susanna. Susie for short. I'm 20 years old. Right now, I'm in my second year of art school, and I often dream about my future. I have big plans, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about them. My most immediate are vacation plans. I'm going to visit my brother who's working in Australia. My mom and I are going to spend two weeks with him in the summer sun. I'm very excited about that. When I return, I need to decide about what I'm going to study next year. I'm still not sure. I'm thinking either fashion design or landscape design. It's hard because I'm interested in both clothes and gardens. If I choose landscape, I'd like to work with my friend Jasper. He does amazing work with gardens, and we've already worked on two together. It was a lot of fun, and we get along really well. I had a real shock the other day. My little nephew, he's six, said to me, Uncle Leo, when you were a little boy, did you have telephones? I couldn't believe it. I said, of course we did. How old do you think I am? Then he said, but did you have cell phones? And I thought, did we? 
I can't remember life without cell phones, but in fact, uh, I think I was about eight when my dad got our first one. Yeah, I said, when I was eight. Aha, said my nephew. I knew it. You are old. I didn't like hearing that. Even though I'm 28, I don't feel grown up at all. I have a great life, a good job, lots of friends. I go out with them most nights. I go to the gym every morning. I'm going to buy a condo next year. Maybe when I'm in my 30s, I'll get married and start a family.